Jade Ashley and I want to welcome you back to yet another video of When The Beat Drops and like always you know I'm here to give you my 5 hottest beats and music of this week so you know you have to stay tuned for more. Okay guys so let's get into this week's beats. So if you remember my last video from last week obviously um, the note that I had was the Jackson Family Next Generation um, show that came on Lifetime. So I hope you guys watched. Um, I said that it was a possibility that I was going to make it a beat. And um, I actually enjoyed the show. So I said, hmm, why not just make it a beat? So that's what I'm going to do. So um, I'm kind of speaking off the strength of both the first and second episode. Um, episode. Episode. Um, so yeah. So I guess I'm just going to go through a list. I have like a long list, but I'm going to try to make it fast, you know? Because we don't need to be here all day, and this is just the first week. So, yeah, I'm just going to talk about it. So, the show focuses on TJ Terrell and Taj Jackson, who are the sons of Tito Jackson. Um, TJ is the youngest, Terrell is the middle child, and Taj is the oldest. And um, they are, I guess you can say they still are, a group called 3T. And they became a group 35 years ago. 35 years ago, wow. <laughs> yeah, 35 years ago. They started their group 3T and they had one and only album that I've never heard of ever in life until this show came out. And after that, oh, they sold three million, like millions of albums, but they were mostly big overseas, which kind of makes sense because I ain't never hear of it. So yeah, no shade, but I'm just saying. So yeah, but um, ever since they released their first album 35 <laughs> years ago, 35 years ago, like damn, these numbers. 35 years ago, they've been trying to release their sophomore album. So I don't even, I can't even do my math. 35 years ago. That was like, 35? That was like in the 80s, right? I think so. So yeah, they released their first album then. And fast forward to 2015 and they're still trying to get it together and release their second album. Uh, so yeah, 20 years later, basically, they're still trying to release uh, um, album number two. TJ is the youngest and he has the most kids. He has four kids with his wife. He has two, two stepchildren and he co-parents Michael Jackson's kids, Paris Prince and Blanket, um, along with um, his mom, Michael Jackson's mom, his grandmother, Catherine. Um, Terrell is the middle one. And he has a baby mother. Lifetime likes to label her, label her as his partner. That is his baby mother. And it is typical baby mother and baby daddy drama between them two. Except that he seemed like a punk when it came to his baby mother. He let her mouth off. She sat there and complained and bitch about everything and he just sit here and take it it is not helping his self-esteem it's not helping what he trying to do with his career like his baby mother was getting on my last nerve and i was just like look i will take care of her for you and put her in her place because she annoying the sh out of me too so yeah um taj which is the oldest he just got married two years ago he has no children but he, his focus definitely that he kind of outlined within that first episode is he's interested in making like a Jackson like documentary. He kind of wants to clear his uncle's name, Michael Jackson's name, and kind of like, you know, put to rest all of the rumors from the media and, you know, kind of like put to rest all of the misconceptions of being a Jackson. Because, you know, to us, you know, we look at Mike, like, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, all of them Jackson 5, like when we hear the name Jackson to us, that is like music royalty. And he's like, yo, we're just like, he said we know, like they know that their name is power and they know the expectations that they have to live up to. But he's like, at the end of the day, we're just like a regular family. So he wants to show people the real Jacksons and let them know, hey, everything that y'all read in the press is not true. So that, that that's his real focus. So... TJ, the youngest, is worried about taking care of all his kids. Terrell, the middle one that got the crazy baby mother. I hope y'all didn't see that. Oh, the crazy baby mother, you know, he's the one that's most dedicated to getting his second album out two years later. And then TJ, I mean Taj, he running around trying to be the next Spike Lee and make a Jackson 5 um, documentary. 
um, it was revealed that their mom had been killed while they were like still teenagers. Their mom, I guess she was like dating another person. Like, I guess she wasn't with their dad, Tito, anymore. So she was dating another person and the guy that she was with, he wanted like money out of Michael Jackson and she would not do it. So he kind of like, he kind of like, he murdered her. And basically that kind of like traumatized him, which I'm sure anybody would be traumatized. So, you know, after you know that happened you know Michael you know being their uncle of course and you know not being the cause but somebody the person that murdered their mom trying to get something for him you know he kind of stepped in so he was like a big moving force within their lives personally within their lives professionally so then they kind of also talk about how his death when he passed away back in 2009 how that kind of like affected them as well when Michael Jackson died we never kind of really got to you know see firsthand you know anybody from his family's reaction or how they really felt or we didn't see anybody kind of express how they felt about his death losing michael to us it was like we lost the king of pop but to them they lost the uncle they lost a brother son and stuff like that so you know we kind of got to see the family's emotion as far as like how their his death even you know years later is still effective towards them as well as the death of their mother because to them they lost two big staples within their lives um other than that, I said Terrell is the one that's committed and wants to be in the group, but he feels like, you know, his image, we all know being in the entertainment industry, if you don't know, you need to know that image is just as important as a talent. So he's well aware of his like his whole weight issues and that should stop him. He's like a lot of insecurities and I kinda I kinda like, you know, I'm here, we like him with the whole image and wanting to do your dreams and then it's like you kind of block and you don't like the way you look and you just insecure like me me and Terrell we we here I don't have crazy baby mother crazy baby father but as far as like the dreams and the goals and stuff like that I feel him and I think that's one one thing that kind of drew me in is like the, here's a Jackson and he has typical pe people problems he has problems that similar to mine so that was one thing that kind of you know attracted me within just that first episode within itself and then um TJ you know fun fact TJ is the one that kind of um kind of he did date Kim Kardashian back in the day when they were like kids and I didn't know that until it was this one scene when he was driving in a car with his oldest son Royal I think his name is and he was saying to his son so he was like are you team booby or are you team booty and then I was like, what? <laughs> like, what father say he had access to something? You like titties or ass? Basically is what he was asking him. And um, I think his son said he likes boobs or something like that. And he was like, oh, well, when I was your age, I was all about the booty. So then he said, oh, was that because of Kim? <laughs> I was like, what? And he was like, how do you know about that? And he was like, look, don't even answer that question. Don't even tell your mother we sit here talking about Kim. And then, you know, Kim, she kind of came up again within the second episode because they were saying that once their mom got killed, the house that they were living in, they never wanted to go back there. So, like, once the house was sold and stuff like that, all of their belongings was, like, put into storage. And then the storage place where they had their belongings, like, all their mother belongings, all of their childhood belongings and stuff like that, it had like closed down so they kind of felt like they lost like a lot of their original memorabilia all of their like you know family memories and stuff so Kim had said that somebody had contacted her about having like all of their family albums and stuff so Kim contacted him and the guy brought it over so it was like a real emotional thing so you know I'm sure it's years later him and Kim they have their prospective families but it's good to see that they're still um close with one another and what you see in like the preview is Chris Jenner Kim's mom she'll actually make an appearance on one of the episodes so I'm excited to see how that kind of like plays out you know I don't even know why I'm surprised a Jackson and a Kardashian like come on <laughs> so yeah other than that um what else um they got they was getting on my nerves a little bit they were sitting there like bitching and crying in the first episode like oh my gosh like we need to work on this like why can't we get it together and then we saw um tito jackson actually in the first episode they had like a family a family dinner or something like that and tito is just like he like that smooth cat daddy like laid back i'm like oh tito can you be my grandfather my grandmother is single i need a grandfather like 
I would slide my grandmother's number your way and I could be an honorary Jackson and I could be all, all up in the fam. He just looked so cool and so smooth. And he was telling his sons, 3T, he was like, look, y'all need to get in that studio. Y'all need to make up them songs. Y'all need to dedicate this time. And I'm like, yes, let them know because prior to that scene, they were sitting there arguing in the house like, well, you don't want to do this. Well, you don't want to do that. Well, I'm more dedicated to you. Then why don't you sit here and do a solo album? Well, I tried to do a solo album, but then, you know, it wasn't working and I just feel like it's better for a group. Like, it was just too much. And I'm like, 20 years and y'all ain't released a second album and y'all still going through the same BS? I'm like, y'all too old for this. Y'all are too freaking old for this. It's, it's come on. Y'all got to get it together. Like, if anything, we should be watching y'all make this album and coming out with a new one. Because technically, my generation, we ain't never heard of a damn 3T in our life. We only know of Janet, Michael, and the Jackson 5, really. That's about it. Those are the only ones we know about. So for y'all to sit here and talk about, yes, we was this big group overseas. We sold millions of records. And then 20 years later, y'all still trying to release y'all second album. Y'all need to get it together, basically. But... Other than that, um, it was also like um, some personal moments. TJ, he has like a baby, like a young, young son, like months old type of baby. And um, they kind of, you know, let us know or showed us within the show that his son was actually diagnosed with uh, some type of hearing disorder when he was born. He was born fine, but I guess like when, you know, babies are born, they do like a hearing test before they like leave the hospital. But he passed in one ear and didn't pass in the other. So then obviously they're following up months later, or a couple, like maybe one or two months. He's not, he's really like, he's like still a newborn. And basically he was diagnosed with this hearing disorder. So while they sitting there bitching about making a second album, he's sitting here worrying about his youngest son, who is literally maybe like a month or two old the most, and he has like a hearing disorder and stuff like that. But um, other than that, you know, the second episode, you know, it was like another fun type of episode, and this one they kind of went and they did like a camping trip, and a camping trip was like in celebration of Prince which is Michael Jackson's oldest son. They celebrated him graduating high school along with another cousin. It was like all the cousins, they came together and they did like a little camping trip and they had fun and you know, they kind of talked about the impact of their family and how people don't realize like, yo, we're just like regular people, but at the same time, you know, although to us we're regular, to other people like, we're like, the Jackson name is Trendsetters and stuff like that. So it was good to kind of see them. We saw um, Prince in a prior episode as well because um they did like paintballing like you get to see like the fun family moments to let us know as viewers that yeah this is the jacksons but the jacksons is just a big you know family that you know wants to get it together that likes to have fun that loves each other and stuff like that so for me like yeah to me in my mind i'm still going to think of the jacksons as like a big you know music family music royalty and stuff like that but I'm starting to see like, yo, they a regular ass family. That's the that's one thing that I kept on saying at the end of the first and second episode. Like, yo, they regular ass family. So, but I know a lot of people was having like negative comments about, oh, don't nobody care about the Jacksons unless it's Janet or Michael. Or oh my gosh, they sitting here messing up Michael's legacy and stuff like that. Like it's like Mad Jacksons, yo. Like Mad Jacksons. Like next week's episode with some girl swear she's their sister. So the three of them sitting there like, so you sure you our sister? Like I think she not their sister. But I mean, I'm enjoying the show so far. So. If you guys want to check out the show, like I said, it comes on Friday nights on Lifetime at 10 p.m. If you guys actually watched it after I mentioned it in last week's video as a note, comment below. Let me know what you think about it. If you happen to follow me on social media, and if you're not following me on social media, you need to follow me on social media, Jade underscore Ashley 94 across all platforms. If you happen to see me tweet about the show, what did you think about it? You know, you know, comment below, use the comment section, let me know. Or if you didn't watch it after I said something about it last week and then you're watching this right now, if you can go online and try to catch it and then let me know what you think. Cause I'm actually liking the show so I think I'm gonna watch it every Friday. Cause you know, I don't got no life, I don't go nowhere anyway. So yeah, I think I'm gonna watch it every Friday at, you know, 10 p.m. So yeah. Moving on to my second beat of this week and this is some heartbreaking news boy this is like i'm really sad like i'm still sad about it and i think i'm gonna get more sad talking about it so and i feel like i have to talk about it because you know 
when this relationship happened, I was excited and I reported it. And now that this relationship is over, I feel like I have something to say about it. So the relationship I'm referring to is BLB and Seven Streeter. So it was revealed in a funny type of way this week that BLB and Seven Streeter are no longer dating. And I find it kind of weird because Monday I actually posted about Seven because I was talking about her one of her songs over her last EP. So BLB he posted, and I'm gonna obviously post the pictures that I'm talking about. So he posted this picture of himself. He was taking a selfie, and it was a woman's backside, and he posted a peach as the emoji. So, like everyone, you know, we're saying, oh, Seven Streeter and BLB are a couple, so we just automatically assume that it was a selfie of BLB and he was showing Seven. We thought the girl was Seven in the picture. But then it turned out it wasn't Seven because then this girl that we did not know, she kind of posted a selfie of herself with B.O.B. in the background. So we like, oh shit, that's not Seven. We like, who this girl? Like, what happened to Seven? Like, Seven, get your man. Like, you don't see what's going on? So then, after, you know, we kind of started speculating as far as, like, what was going on? We wanted to know the tea. Like, this didn't seem right to us. We was like, what's good? So then the girl who was in the picture, what's the girl name? I think her name is, like, Brittany or something like that or Britt or whatever. So um, her friend, she actually made a post and she comp well she made a she made a post about the picture and she said it's funny how BLB contacted my friend randomly on Instagram and wanted her to go along with a publicity stunt as if they were dating. He convinced her that it would be good publicity for her business when all along he was trying to make himself more relevant. He promised to promote her business in exchange for doing it for him and now it all hit the media and he has changed his mind leaving my friend looking like she broke up a relationship when all along she doesn't even know B.O.B. in real life. Receipts coming soon and then she kind of posted um, B.O.B. He kind of you know inboxed her like oh do you want to do some business and stuff like that and then aside from the inbox we see um text messages and then they were kind of like you know planning like with the pictures like what caption should he put with the picture on instagram like it's just all of this messy stuff so we like bob like really what's good we need you to say something about this because all this time he wasn't saying nothing so then he took to his instagram and he posted this video here so check it out it what why y'all blowing everything out of proportion? Cause, cause Bobby Ray trying to smash. Bobby Ray is single. Bobby Ray is newly single. Hell yeah, Bobby Ray will promote your jewelry line if Bobby Ray is trying to smash. But don't forget about the other half of that deal now. You, you still owe me some sex. So let's make it happen. Call me when you're ready. So I was sitting there watching that video and I was like, how disrespectful of you, Bobby Ray. I was like, are you kidding me? And to me, I always thought of him like this nice guy, you know, he, he just didn't seem like an asshole. But in that video, he seemed like the asshole. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like Bobby Ray sitting here talking about, oh, we made a deal. You owe me sex. Like seriously? Like, where is your respect? Even if you and Seven, like, was like, I don't know what went on between y'all. Obviously, nobody know what's went on between y'all. But you like, I'm newly single. I'm out here having fun. Girl, you only Like, that is just so disrespectful. I was like, Bobby Ray. And I'm like, come on. Like, I just got sad because I loved him and Seven together. And then I was sitting here thinking about, which is funny, because I'm always listening to her EP, Should Have Been There, Part 1. And then the last song features him. And then I know other than that one song they had so much music that they was working on together because we would always see them in the studio like it was just so much and I was just sad like I honestly truthfully in my heart and in my mind I was seriously sad like why are they over and then he's sitting here acting like the asshole like like I'm just and then seven She's doing what she needs to be doing. She's not even stressing the situation. She's sitting here working. She's sitting here. She about to go on tour. Her should have been there. Tour. She's going to be at SOBs. I think next month. I'm, I, I need to try to be in there, actually, because I love Seven. So, like, I'm really, like, really upset about the situation. And I'm really sad about the situation. Because I thought they made an amazing couple. I don't know what happened. It's sad. And, of course, we were all looking for a response from Seven. And the only thing she posted about the situation, which wasn't, like, 
direct but we know what's about the situation is she posted this Nelson Mandela quote saying there's no passion to be found in settling for a life that's less than the one you are capable of living so I guess that was her response to the whole situation I guess it wasn't all that we seen or all that we thought it seemed to be so I'm sad about it, but the way Bobby Ray acting, if he gonna act like that, then forget it, then. Forget it. Just forget it. Anyways, that's just gonna be better music for Seven. I mean, her last EP was about a breakup of a previous relationship, so she about to have some lit-ass music. She might have to go back and record new music for her debut album, because it ain't come out yet, but she about to have some poppin'-ass music, so... That's all I gotta say about the situation. I'm sad about it, but I guess shit happens. So moving on to my third beat of this week. We finally, 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 God has come down and made this happen. There will finally be a Braxton's album. So we all know that when Braxton Family Values first started on VTV, the whole thing about the, probably like maybe, Maybe within like the first two seasons, maybe half of the third season, the whole fight between all of the sisters was, we are trying to get this Braxton's album together. You know, we weren't a group. We were a group before, you know, but then this person had to drop out and then eventually Tony went solo. And then, you know, this person over here did her solo project, AKA Tamar, like, it was just too much. So it was trying to get them to get on an album together and as the seasons went on as each sister got their own popularity off of the show people started branching out and you know the whole idea of there being a Braxton's album kind of like die you know Tawanda's interested in acting Tony is still being the great Tony Braxton as she is Tamar went on to sell two freaking amazing albums Tracy did her own album as well um trina she's sitting here doing pop music and doing bar chicks so it was like so much other stuff that came into play that it was like the whole you know thing from the beginning as far as like the whole braxton's family album was kind of lost but if you watch the last season and the last couple of episodes of the last season you know tony brought together or brought the idea of i want to do a braxton's family christmas album so everybody was like seriously like i'm so busy i ain't got time for this but we saw them kind of trying to make it work you know it might have not been all of them at one time in the studio it might have been a few of them or you know maybe whoever was missing before in the studio session would come back and then it was it was it was a mixture it was real braxton family value type of ish and then that's how the season ended and i'm glad to say that they fell through with the whole project and they will have the braxton family albums christmas it will be called yeah braxton family album christmas that's the name of it it will be releasing on october 30th and it will be available for pre-order on october 16th and actually their brother is only one boy michael he will also be on the album as well and the songs that will be on the album is a total of eight songs and they will be singing this christmas Every day is Christmas, Mary did you know, oh holy night, last Christmas, bless new year, under the Christmas tree, and this Christmas, which is the Braxton family version. And I'm actually excited about that. Like to me, I love the holidays. I love I definitely love Christmas. It just gives me this homey type of feel, just gives me this excitement, you know, it's the love around. Like it's just something about the holidays that just makes me happy. I love holiday movies. So then to have like a holiday album, like for the, like the last two years, I've been listening to Tamar's Christmas album, to be honest with you. That was my Christmas music for the Christmas time. So now, instead of just having Tamar, we have the entire, you know, Braxton family. Um, I think it was Trina that was featured on um, Tamar's album, her Christmas album. They did like the Chipmunk song or something like that. But now we have all of the Braxtons on one Christmas album. So I'm excited for that. So I think I'm definitely going to have to cop that. I think we all need Christmas music. Like, come on. Like, it's good for each year. Like, it's something that just does not ever get old. Christmas classics. And we know the Braxton, Braxtons could all sing their faces off. So once again, the Braxton Family Christmas album will be coming out October 30th. So moving on to my fourth week of this week. And this was some exciting news to get this week. So on Thursday, the nominees for the 2016 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was announced and some of our favorites were actually nominated. One of our favorites that was nominated was Miss Janet Jackson and I thought that was amazing because she just released her, I think it was her 11th studio album if I'm not mistaken, 
which was Unbreakable. And I think Unbreakable actually went number one. So shout outs to Janet for that. So I was excited about that. Uh, another nominee of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was NWA. And y'all know them. Uh, them. NWA had a big year because of the whole biopic Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton was like number one for like three to four weeks at the box office and they raised over like 34 million dollars or something like that. It was a dope ass movie. Like it was a really great movie. So and with that film of course it kind of brought you know the whole NWA brand back together. The movie inspired Dr. Dre to make music for the first time since like 99. Like it just had such a big impact. And then another Another person who's one of my favorite people, my grandmother, Shaka Khan, she was also nominated to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I was just so excited about that. I was like, oh my god, yes, for these nominees. Other nominees included the Spinners, Chic. So, and which is weird because I was actually. I love Unsung, just to let y'all know on TV One. So I was actually watching Sheik's Unsung Wednesday night, only to wake up Thursday morning and see the nominees for the Rock and, Roll, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when they were on there. So I was like, how convenient is that? Like, I don't know how that was planned out or how that even happened, but I thought that was pretty dope. So what you can do is you can actually go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's um, official website and it's a total of I think 15 nominees and what you get to do is you get to vote for your top five and at the at, in December they let you know when or who who won and who will be inducted into the 2016 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the actual ceremony goes down in April so I thought that was cool I voted and when I voted the people that I voted for was of course Janet Jackson and she was number one I also voted for my grandmother Shaka Khan and she was number seven I voted for the spinners and they were number nine I also voted for NWA of course and they were number ten and because I had just watched you know Sheik's you know unsung and I learned about them and I thought it was dope I was like why not you know vote for them to be inducted and they were number twelve so I thought that was cool um yeah so what I'll do is I'll actually link the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's official link below in the description box and you can take a look and maybe if you don't know some of the artists maybe you can look them up and learn about them and you can vote to see who you want to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and in de and, and December we will get to see who actually wins and who will be in the 2016 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So yes. Moving on to my final beat up this week, I have to talk about Matthew Knowles, and I think the last time I talked about Matthew Knowles was, I think, um, I want to say last year when the whole um, Sony hacking scandal happened, and it was kind of revealed in the hacking scandal that there was supposed to be a Destiny's Child biopic. I, th I think that was the last time I talked about him here. So, but Matthew Knowles, he's been in the um the news between like maybe the last two to three weeks or something like that so this week he was actually in the news because he is starting a school not he's not starting a school but he's kind of doing like workshops and stuff like that and i just want to read to make sure i get the name right so the name of the workshop is called the entertainment industry how do i get in so basically what he's doing is he's kind of giving pointers about how you can get into the industry, his expertise. And I know some people are kind of like, who do you think Matthew Knows is? And I think a lot of people are kind of speaking off of what he's done in his personal life as far as cheating on Miss Tina and having two kids with two other women and he married to a whole nother woman. So I think they're just trying to put his personal life, you know, into the spectrum. But when you really think about it, like, he helped. He's not... He hasn't, he helped Beyonce be Beyonce. Now Beyonce, her work ethic and you know, everything that she's done to become this amazing inspiration that she is now has made her, you know, Beyonce. But as far as her roots and as far as how she got started, as far as like that first level, if it wasn't for Matthew, we would not have Destiny's Child, we would not have Beyonce. And I think a couple of other artists that I remember him, um, off the top of my mind, one artist that I remember that he um, managed was Tiffany Evans. He did Tiffany, he managed Tiffany Evans, and I want to say JoJo, but I could be lying about JoJo, but I know for a fact that he managed Tiffany Evans. So I feel like regardless of what he has going on in his personal life and stuff like that, I think that he has more than enough knowledge to give the basic information within a workshop 
to let us know how do you make it in the music industry. And I think the best thing about it is that it's only $199. Now, to me, that ugh, is not, to me, this, that's not a bad price. That Like, that's nothing. So I feel like $200 to take a workshop with Matthew Knowles to, you know, just pick his brain and kind of like get some, I guess you can say profes professional advice on how you can make it into the industry. And uh, it's open to like singers, rappers, dancers, producers, you know, managers, like anybody that's like any role that has anything to do with the entertainment industry is basically welcome to participate in the workshop. It will be going down on October 24th in Houston so I think that's pretty cool I mean if he were to kind of like travel he might actually do this it wasn't announced but I know starting in Houston but if he were to like actually like kind of like travel to like different cities and you know kind of hold this seminar to you know give his advice as far as how um you can like get into the industry I think that would be pretty dope will I attend uh I don't why not honestly to, to be honest, I would attend. If he was to come to New York and do the same exact workshop that he's doing in Houston, I would probably pay $200 just to, you know, see what I could get from him. You never know. So, I thought that was pretty cool. And, you know, that's my opinion on that situation. A lot of people have mixed opinions and stuff. So, yeah. But other than that, those are my five hot beats of this week. Okay guys, so you know I have to end every video by thank you for tuning into this week's video. And of course I also have to remind you guys to comment on my videos, like my videos, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos with others. It would greatly, greatly be appreciated. And I have one quick note to leave you guys with this week, and that is Rihanna has finally spoke about R8. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting. Like Rihanna, where is your eighth album at? Like girl, we've been waiting. So, actually this week in LA, she had an unveiling of the album's cover and also she revealed the album's title and the title of her 8th album will be called Anti and on the cover is a dope, it's a dope picture actually. It's actually a picture of her, I think she was like in kindergarten or something like that and she collaborated with an artist and the artist kind of, you know, did some extra type of things to make the picture look dope. So I think it's pretty cool. So we know what the album cover looks like, we know the name of the album, but now we don't have a release date yet. So I don't know if Rihanna's going to give it a release date or she's going to follow the trend of I'm going to just drop music whenever the hell I feel like it and <laughs> well, we might wake up one day and R8 or Anti I should say will be somewhere on our iTunes and up for sale or something like that. So I'm excited. Um, yeah, we've been waiting. It's been long, long, long overdue. Her last album came out my freshman year of college. I remember, freshman year, I remember getting the physical CD, and here I am in my senior year. So Rihanna, girl, stop playing. You let us know the title. You showed us the cover. So now we need the release date because we need that album, okay? And other than that, of course, you know I have to leave you with my song of the week. And if you guys have been keeping up with Empire, and I'm sure you guys saw this week's episode when Lucius finally got out of jail, and he threw himself a going a welcome home party, and um, there was a performance by Jesse Smollett, aka Jamal Lyon, featuring Pitbull, and they performed their song No Doubt About It, which is absolutely dope. And the day after the episode, um, their music video premiered. So if you want to actually catch the music video for their song No Doubt About It in its entirety, you can head over to my blog at www jade-ashley94.blogspot.com Once again, I thank you for tuning in and I will see you guys next time. So bye! Hey guys, thank you for watching and don't forget to share and subscribe and I will see you all next time.